Seattle has long had a reputation for being one of the best cities in America for bicycling. Thousands of Seattleites bicycle to work each day, and the number is growing. Bicycling is also one of the most popular recreational activities in our city. On any given day, you're likely to encounter commuters, bicycle messengers, people running errands, or cyclists out just enjoying our beautiful surroundings. Seattle is a city surrounded by hills and water. Getting around town inevitably means finding routes around, over, or through those natural barriers, as well as a few obstacles we've contributed to the landscape, like highways, heavily trafficked roads, and railroad tracks. Seattle enjoys its status as a bicycle-friendly city, and we're proud of the attention our facilities have been getting. Other cities are asking how we do it. We'd like to share with you what we've accomplished. The Seattle Engineering Department created the bicycle program in the late 1970s. Over time, the bicycle program has evolved and now has two main goals. One, building a comprehensive trail system, and two, making all streets safe and accessible for bicyclists. We'll first look at the trail system. A map of the system reveals that you can get just about anywhere you're going on the city's trails network. For bicyclists, the urban trail system provides a combination of signed bike routes, marked bike lanes, and separated trails. They connect Seattle's neighborhoods to work sites, schools, shopping districts, and parks. Whenever possible, our trails travel along shorelines and abandoned railroad rights of way. This not only preserves these natural areas, but creates green belts that provide an escape from concrete, highways, and skyscrapers. Our urban trail system consists of three regional trails and neighborhood connector routes. The three regional trails are the Burt Gilman Trail, the I-90 Trail, and the Duwamish Trail. Citizen Initiative in the 1970s started the process to build a popular Burt Gilman Trail on an abandoned railroad right-of-way. Running 12 miles, this 10-foot wide trail winds through some of the most scenic areas in Seattle and is used by more than 1 million people annually. Over 800 people a day use it to commute to work and school. Although bicyclists account for about 70% of the traffic, they share the trail with other people on wheels, as well as pedestrians and joggers. In some places, because of the high use, we have divided our trails into separate all-heels and all-wheels paths. The I-90 trail was built as part of the Interstate 90 freeway project. In the late 1960s, bicyclists began lobbying to get bicycle facilities included in this project. This trail provides a vital link across Lake Washington to Eastside communities. It is the only way for bicyclists to ride across the lake. Without this link, they would have to ride 25 miles around the lake. One section of the I-90 trail tunnels through a hillside, allowing bicyclists to avoid a steep hill climb. The tunnel is monitored by video cameras and decorated with murals painted by local school children. The Duwamish Trail is the major trail connection through the south end of Seattle. This trail follows the Duwamish River. It is largely because of the efforts of a citizen group called Friends of the Duwamish that we have this trail. This group was concerned with providing public access to the river and enhancing neglected portions of the waterway. They brought their concerns to the city's attention. Seventeen sources of funding were used to build the Duwamish Trail. A major portion of the trail was built as restoration for a pipeline project. These three trails, the Burt Gilman, the I-90, and the Duwamish, are the main arteries of our urban trail system. But even with an extensive trail system, most bicycling takes place on city streets. In order to meet the needs of all bicyclists, we are working to improve the existing street network to provide better and safer bike access. The Bicycle Spot Safety Improvement Program is an innovative attempt to remove barriers to bicycling from the existing street system. The program makes about 100 low-cost, small-scale improvements each year. Seattle's bike spot improvements usually cost less than $10,000. Many cost less than $100. Typical bike spot improvements include signing bike routes, installing bicycle parking racks, installing warning signs, 
routine maintenance like pothole filling and street sweeping, adjusting loop detectors to pick up bicycle traffic, building traffic islands at major street crossings, installing bicycle safe drain grates, installing rubberized railroad crossings and striping bike lanes. Most bike spot improvements are the result of citizen requests. Bicyclists can fill out a request card with the location and description of a problem and then mail it back to us. The bike spot improvement cards are distributed to local bike shops and bike clubs. The bike program also works to improve bicycle access and safety on Seattle's 150 bridges. Because in Seattle, if you can't get across the bridges, nothing else matters. But most important, these improvements help make our streets and structures safer for everyone using them. The success of the Seattle program can be traced to three key ingredients. Citizen participation, training for engineers, planners, and policymakers, and a full-time bicycle coordinator position. Key ingredient number one is citizen participation. Without the tireless efforts of concerned citizens, little of the Seattle Bicycle Network would exist. Nearly every bicycle or pedestrian path in Seattle has come at the request of our citizens. And not just cyclists either. Other organizations like Open Space, Environmental, and Neighborhood Groups have become involved in and supported the urban trail system. We have learned that a bicycle advisory board is a very important part of citizen participation. The Seattle Bicycle Advisory Board was created by City Council Resolution and advises all city departments on issues regarding bicycling. Each member is expected to follow one or two projects from preliminary planning through construction. Board members attend public meetings, meet with project managers, and serve on other committees. Bicycle concerns are also a priority for the Cascade Bicycle Club. This organization works with other clubs, neighborhood groups, and businesses to promote bicycling. With more than 4,000 members, this club helped campaign for an open space bond issue, which is now supplying $6 million for the development of trails in the city. The second key ingredient is bicycle training for engineers, planners, and policymakers. Since these professionals are involved with projects that affect bicycling on a day-to-day -day basis, it is critical that they have the necessary training and information. There are a number of organizations that teach bicycle-related courses. Seattle has contracted with these groups to educate our planners on bicycle facility design, bicycle liability, rail-to-trail conversions, and bicycle law enforcement. The city has adopted the American Association of State Highway and Transportation Officials Guidelines for the Development of New Bicycle Facilities as a guide for designing both our on-street and off-street bicycle facilities. Last but not least in our list of key ingredients is the need for a full-time bicycle coordinator position. A bicycle coordinator should work to institutionalize bicycling by integrating bicycles into city transportation, parks, and open space plans. The bicycle coordinator serves as a member of the design team for bicycle facilities like bridges.